<clears throat> ho, ho, ho. So it's that time of the year. We're doing a holiday special. And we're not just wrapping our presents. We're also wrapping our functions, too. That's right. It's a special episode on decorator functions. So we're going to be writing three decorator functions today. And first, what are decorator functions? Well, they're higher order functions. That is, functions that take functions in and put them back out. But they add just a little extra spice. So the debounce function that we're going to write first is a way to kind of control how often you call a function. It'll return a function, and it'll only call that function after a certain amount of time in between the last time it was called. So let's write that. We'll do a const debounce. And it's a function that will take in a function, and it'll take in a wait time, how long we need to wait before we actually call that function. And what I'm going to do here is return a function. And notice here I'm using the function keyword. This is so I can apply this myself or set the context myself. I'm going to close over a variable here um, right like that. So um, what I need to do now is, one, um, decide, to define what the function is I'm going to use in my set timeout. So I'll say uh, const uh, function to run is just going to be an anonymous function here that um, will take our function and we'll apply uh, this and the arguments. Cool. And what we'll have to do next is going to look a little weird, but it'll make more sense after the next line. I'm going to call clear timeout with my timer. And the last thing I'm going to want to do is set my timer equals the results of set timeout with my function to run and my wait time. And if you didn't know, set timeout actually returns a key that you can use with clear timeout to reset the timer. Um, now, in order to test if my debounce works, I'm going to need a function to debounce. So let's define one. Const add is going to be a function which takes in an A and a B. And all it's going to do is console log uh, A plus B. Now I need to get a debounced version of it. So const debounced add is just going to be a debounce with the add function. And I'm going to give it. Um, 200 milliseconds to wait, or 2,000 milliseconds, two seconds. And now, in order to test it, I'm going to run debounce to add with one and one. So it should log two. But what I'm going to do actually is um, call it a whole bunch of times in this file. Yeah, that seems adequate. And what I expect when I run this file is that I should only get the logging of 1 plus 1. I should only get 2. And that should only happen one time. And that'll happen after this call. So I should just have to wait about 2 seconds. And when I'm, after that, I should get um, 2 to log out. So let's try and test that. We're going to do node uh, debounce. There, there we go, 2. Um, so it looks like our debounce function is working. And that is a way you can write it so that it will also um, use the, this context if you're, like, your function that you were putting in uses this. So the timer function is going to be cool. It'll be pretty useful for debugging. If we have a function, we're not sure if it's the bottleneck of our application. Or we just want to know how long does it take to run. So let's write that. Const timerizer. So again, it's going to be a function that takes in a function. And we're going to return a function. So we'll say um, we'll say let timed equal, and we'll use the rest of the args. And what do we need to do in time? Well, we need to take a time before we run our function, run our function, and then take the time after we run the function. And we can log the difference between those that start and end time. So we'll say let start equal a new date. Let's say let out. And this will be equal to, um, how do we want to do this? Um, well, we could do our function and apply this and give it the args. And then we'll let an end equal the new date. And what we want to do is log the how long it took to run. So we'll say it ran in, um, we don't want a string. We want the end minus the start. And we'll say in that many milliseconds. And we have to return out. And lastly, we actually want to return our function. So let's return timed. OK. 
tools. It's a little unhappy about something. Oh, we need an arrow here. Cool. Now what we want to do is test this function. I'm going to need a function that probably takes a little bit of time to run, so I'll just write a recursive Fibonacci sequence. So const recursive fibs. It's just going to take a number. And we'll have our base case, which is if uh, the number is less than or equal to 1, we can return 1. And if not, we can return, we have to grab the last two numbers in the sequence and sum them. So we can return recursive fibs with num minus 1 plus recursive fibs with num minus 2. And that looks pretty happy. So let's memoize this or timerize this recursive fibs. So const timed fibs is just recursive is timerizer with our recursive fibs. And now let's test it by running timed fibs with uh, let's say um, one uh, ten and 20. And let's see. Okay, okay, okay. Do we need to console log? No, we don't. This will log for us. And now we should see how long it took to run each one of those when we run this file. So let's node timer. And we should see three console logs. And what I would expect is that they would take a little bit longer each time. All right. Let's see if we can make it a little bit different. We'll do 1, 20, and 30. Really see the difference. Cool. So now we've got a, a function that will tell us how long it took um, to actually run the input function. Pretty useful for debugging. So our last function is going to be a memoizer function. And what this will do is um, save um, all of the inputs that this function has taken and the results of them. And if we're calling this function with those same inputs again, um, what we'll do is just use what we've previously output, what we have in our memo, instead of actually running the function and doing the work again. Um, so we'll say const memoizer. And this is just going to be a function that takes in an, a function. And we're going to also uh, we'll say uh, const memo, and we'll just use a regular old um, JavaScript object as what will be holding our memo. And now we're going to be returning a function, so let's return. Um, we'll spread or use the rest of the arguments. And what do we need to do in here? Um, so let's get a key that we can use for our memo. So our const key is going to be, well, remember that for an object, all of the keys in an object need to be strings. So we have a nice uh, json.stringify method. And what we can do is uh, stringify the arguments. And then we could say if, um, if we have the result of that, so if we have the memo at that key, um, then we can return that. So if we have that, we can return memo at the key. Now, if we don't have it, we could say the memo at the key is equal to um, our function. And here's where we would call um, our function with the arguments. And what do we want to do now? We'll we return that. Cool. And I think that's all we need to do. So um, let's test this out with our recursive fibs. I'm going to export it from this file. Uh, module.exports. And we'll do timed fibs. And I'll also export our uh, timer. Is that what we called it? Timerizer. Cool. And let's get them, require them in here. Um, const timerizer, and what else did we get? Timed fibs. Require uh, dot slash timer. We got those things from there. Okay, so um, what we can do now is 
memoize our fib function and then see how long that one actually takes to run. So we're going to say um, const memode, memode, memo fibs equals uh, memoizer with our, um, now do we want the timed fibs? Let's get the recursive fibs. So fibs, is that what I called it? Recursive fibs, okay. Let's export it instead of timed fibs, we're exporting recursive fibs. Okay, you're happy about that. Um, so memoizer, we're gonna memoize our recursive fibs. Okay, and then I want to time that function. So const memo and timed fibs is um, just going to be a timerizer with our memo fibs. And now we're going to call memo and timed fibs with, um, let's use 20. And what I'm going to do is actually run this one a few times. And what I expect is that the first time will take a bit of time because we actually have to do the math to find out what the 20th fib is. But every time after that should take almost no time because we already have it saved um, in our memo object. So let's try and see if this works. Cross our fingers. Um, node memoizer. Ah, there we go. So not perfect. Let's use a little bit of a longer time to see. Uh, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Cool. So what we expected is, uh, as we expected, it takes um, almost no time after it's run it. Um, and so that way, if we memoize our functions, um, we can get them done quicker. And uh, that can be one way that we can actually solve the bottleneck that we had before. So here we have just a three really cool um, functions you can write yourself. You can wrap them up um, just in time for the holidays. So take a good, uh, have a good holiday.